Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze and Blaze Stewart, Architect at Atmosphere, and today we're going to be taking a look at table APIs and why you should use these. Hi guys, today I've been talking about table storage in Azure. I want to look at this often overlooked feature on Azure because sometimes folks don't really consider it when they're thinking about data storage and sometimes it will work just fine for many applications. So I'm going to go over kind of how it works and then we're going to go into the Azure portal and take a look at it. And then we're going to look at an example of how you might want to use this in code. So let's imagine that I wanted to create a table that looks something like this in a storage table. Now the primary key on this table is the combination of the partition key and the row key. Now these values are not unique in of themselves, but with a partition key plus a row key would be unique and that would make your primary key. And these impact performance and we'll explain that in just a second. Everything kind of to the right here is discretionary. So a given row in a storage table can have up to 255 properties. And I really don't want to call them columns, but in the sense of a table, they would have uh, columns if you had every row in a storage table having the same properties associated with each row. It's not mandatory to have every row in a storage table have the same set of properties associated with it. You could have one row that has uh, essentially a column name, name first and last, but not title, and another row that has title and last, but not first. And there's nothing that's going to enforce that by way of a schema or anything like that. So if you're expecting a row to have a certain set of properties associated with it that every record in this storage table will have, then you're going to have to uh, enforce that in code. Storage tables are not going to do that for you. But that's also one of the flexibilities of this in that you can have different kinds of rows stored in a single storage table. And that has its use cases too. There's a lot of things that you can do with this that don't necessarily fit into what we might consider to be traditional RDBMS style applications. I can store different kinds of rows in a single table and they can have different properties and I can query them separately. I can filter them separately and do all that different kind of stuff with them. But all that to say is you just have to figure out which kind of rows or different kind of properties you're going to have on each of your rows and then set them accordingly. And if you need to enforce a, a given property on a row, then you would need to make sure that exists whenever you write that record in the code that's going to be managing this, this table rather than expecting the table to do that for you. The only two properties that are required for any row in a storage table is the partition key and the row key. So when we talk about tables, one of the first things that folks want to think about is how they're going to query the data. In storage tables, querying the data is generally not considered one of the best use cases for this because it doesn't support a real rich API for querying the data. There is one, and we'll look at what that is, but it's really not considered a best practice to rely on this for querying data across a storage table. Now, having said that, you can do it. And let's talk about some of the implications that's going to have when you're going to decide what your row key is going to be and what your partition key is going to be. So whenever you go to store data in a storage table, it's best not to rely on any of the properties over here to look up data against because any query that's going to rely on anything over here is going to be using unindexed properties. So the queries will not perform. So don't use these for queries. In fact, it's probably best just to try to avoid it if possible and really think about how you can use these other two fields over here index and row keys for doing your queries against those and try to avoid using these at all costs for doing queries if you want your queries to run well. Because these two fields right here are indexed and these aren't, these are going to be optimal for querying data. So if I need to filter data, the best practice for querying data is to try to filter data only within the context of a given partition against the row key. The reason you want to query within a given partition key is because the way that data is stored inside of storage tables. Whenever something is stored, it tries to group everything within a partition key together. So anything that has this first partition key is going to be relatively close on the hardware that is going to be storing this data. Other partition keys are going to be stored 
elsewhere. So if I have to query across these partition keys, the query is going to have to query against multiple partition keys against multiple servers where this data is stored, and then kind of bring that all back together by way of joins. So if I have to do that, then the filtering against that can be very slow. If I can keep it within the context of a partition key, it's going to be very fast, and then it's going to be using the index that is local to the given row key within the context of a single partition key. And that's going to be the most optimal kind of query that you can do. The temptation might be then just to stick everything in a single partition and not try to use partition keys. Well, the reason you don't want to do that is because whenever you go to access this, if you have everything in a single partition, you could potentially bog down whatever storage mechanism it is with multiple requests. And you're not going to get that horizontal scale if you don't have a bunch of partition keys in your data. So fundamentally, everything gets down to how am I going to set up my partition keys to make my, my queries performant? And then how am I going to set up my row key and what data am I going to include in my row key to make my queries work well? And that balancing act really is going to be determined on how you're going to be using the storage for getting data in and out of it. So if you want to make this infinitely scalable. Basically, you just want to use as many partition keys as you can. If you don't need to do queries against this data, you don't need to do any kind of filtering it. You just want to grab data based on a partition key and a row key, and that's it. You're just grabbing single entities and single rows. Then prefer multiple partition keys, as many as you can get, because that's going to spread your data out as horizontally as it possibly can be. However, if you're going to be filtering the data and you're going to be needing to do those kind of operations, one of the things you might want to look at is how the data is going to be stored and how the application then is going to be using it. So if in the case of this data right here, if I was writing an application that was going to be looking at things by company, then storing the data by company might be a good use of a partition key. So Atmosera would be one company and then Microsoft would be another. And so everything that is in the Atmosera partition key will be queried accordingly to that partition key plus the row key. And then the Microsoft key, of course, would be for the Microsoft side of the application. And then the row key would just be unique for whatever fields I have or whatever rows I have inside of that. So that becomes the way that you decide the partition keys. As we said, we really don't want to be filtering against these properties over here. We want to be filtering against the row key within a given partition key, if possible. It is possible to go cross partition, but you try to want it, you want to try to stick to keeping it within a partition using the row key. And sometimes a given table might not work for everything. And in that case, sometimes what you end up doing is not throwing this away and going to an RDBMS. You actually end up creating a second table with the same data, and maybe you use a different row key or you do a different presentation of the data. Ultimately, what this gives you is cheap storage and without the overhead of having to have a database system. So this gives you cheap stores that scales very well horizontally, but you're not maintaining an RDBMS, which doesn't scale well horizontally. So if I was wanting to present this in a different way and my row key just using this ID didn't work, I could use something like the title for the row key, and then this data would be stored somewhere else. And that would just be a separate table. The trade-off for doing that is that I have to maintain two tables now, which really isn't as bad as it sounds. But in reality, that will allow you to have two highly scalable tables that you can scale horizontally really well that will return data very quickly as long as you keep it within the partition key and the row key. And you can also present that data in multiple ways that will serve the application depending on what you're trying to do in that application. I'm here in the Azure portal and I've created a table already and this is under the table uh, tab right here and you can easily create tables and manage the security using this blade for that. Now there is a limited view of the data in that table using storage browser right here. I can go into the table and I can view the data and I can apply some basic filterings with this view right here. Now, this is very limited in what you can do with it. It's not very robust, but it does give you the ability to view it. And that is a nice feature that didn't exist previously in uh, storage account options inside of the Azure portal. So I'm here inside of the Storage Explorer and I've imported some data into that table we just saw in the Azure portal using the import feature. And basically all I did is I grabbed some data that has all the zip codes in the United States, it's just a CSV file. And I'll link that data in the video description below if you want to play with it some. But in any case, this data right here has a bunch of data related to zip codes. So 
when I imported this, I changed some of the, the, the column names in that CSV to row key and partition key. Now, I chose for this demo right here to use a partition key for the state, and I used the row key for the zip code. Now, given that the zip code is actually unique, I could use that for the partition key as well if I didn't care about query performance. In that case, I set the partition key to the zip code, and basically what that's going to do is distribute this data across as many partitions as it can, and therefore it's gonna be able to retrieve that data rather quickly. But given that I wanted to optimize this maybe more for performance within a given state, I chose the partition key to be the state and then the row key to be the zip code. And so that will allow me to have high performance queries as long as the partition uh, is going to be within the context of a state. Now I can still query across partitions if I need to, and that will be okay. But if I really want to optimize for filtering, I want to make sure that I'm going to limit that as much as I can to a partition key and then filter based on that. So once I have all this data imported, I get something that looks like this. And this is just going to allow me to page the data, looking at the various uh, rec rows in this. And they all have different, um, different values associated to each one of these uh, zip codes. And it's giving me data like city, uh, county, and time zone even. If I wanted to use different partition keys that were larger uh, administrative regions, maybe time zone would be a good one. Uh, that would give me relatively, you know, five or six time zones versus, you know, state, which if I include uh, some of the territories, that would be like Guam and Puerto Rico. I'm going to end up with, you know, 50 or 60. For this particular uh, data, uh, I, 50 or 60 is probably fine because I'm not going to have uh, more than 30,000 records in that. So I'm probably going to be limiting it, limiting it to a couple hundred uh, rows per partition. Now, a given partition can contain millions of rows if needed, but it's not going to be distributed uh, widely. So depending on the need of the application, really getting back to that partition key and choosing the right partition key and the row key for optimizing the performance. So let's create some filters on this just to show you kind of what we're looking at. Now, if I wanted to just grab a single record, uh, I can do an add clause here, and then I can just do, it. let's say, AK, and then I would want to use the the row key to grab a single record or row in this, and uh, that would be the zip code 99501. And that would give me this row right here for Anchorage, Alaska. And that's going to be the fastest way to retrieve data inside of a particular storage table is just using the primary key, which is the partition key and the row key. Now, I can filter within the context of a partition key if I want to against the row key. So let's just say um, where, uh, I don't know, greater than uh, that particular value there. And that's within a given partition key that is, that's filtering on the row key. So you can still use indexed searches using that value uh, right there. So that's just going to quickly return data filtering on the row key. Now, if I needed uh, to filter on some other value, it's not going to be as performant because I'm not using index fields anymore. It's not going to be visible in this particular data set because uh, this isn't huge. It's only about 30,000 records, and that you can iterate that pretty quickly. But if I didn't have something that was indexed, this could take a while. So I'm going to use double population greater than, say, let's say 10,000 people in Alaska. So let's run that and see what zip codes have more than 10,000, oh, but 100,000 people, um, 10,000 people in Alaska. So we have... 23 zip codes that have uh, a population of greater than 10,000 in Alaska. And that's what that, that query is telling me. Now, if I need to query across partitions, I can take the same data and then run it like this. Now that's querying the entire data set now. Under the hood, the SDK uses OData, which is a technology that allows you to use the query string on a URL to send in a filter into the table API. And so all those filters we were building inside of the Storage Explorer was using OData under the hood and passing that on to the APIs in the back end. So the SDK for this uses that same technology, but here I've exposed it so that you can see it a little bit more closely. So I'm using the SDK for Node.js. And basically all this is using is something called the table client is using a connection string. You basically just connect it to whatever storage account, whatever table that you want to use the OData against. And then what you can then do is just list entities with a query. And this query is just a filter based on a string.
Now the syntax for this is pretty straightforward, but it isn't exactly what you expect. It's more like what you experience with something like bash or something like that, rather than using equals or greater than symbols, it uses shortened forms of EQ or GT or things like that to represent the operators for filtering the data. So this way it can be embedded inside of a URL without confusing it with some of the other symbols that URLs support. So this one basically is just basically looking for a filter on a query string that I'm passing into this from a UI. And then it's querying the table using the table client, basically just passing that through as a filter right there. And then it's just building an HTML table with the results of that query. And then it's going to pass that back to the browser and display it. So it's pretty straightforward in that result. But what you'll see is I'm able to build queries using OData queries and then you will see the results displayed on the browser. So let's go ahead and start that on port 3000, and then I'm gonna do node index.js, and it's gonna start running on localhost 3000. So if I go to localhost 3000, this is the UI for it. And this is where I'm gonna put in my filters, and I already have a couple here that I've been working with. So I'm gonna do it based on the row key. So if I do row key EQ uh, 99501, that's going to find where the row key is 99501. And this is the data associated with that. So that's just looking up a single entity based on the row key. Now, this doesn't have the partition key as a part of that query. So it does look at all the partitions that I have in this, which happens to be the state that is the state abbreviation for the partition. So if I did partition key equals uh, CA, that's for California. Let's do uh, something like uh, Alaska, maybe. Partition key equals Alaska. And this is returning all of the zip codes for Alaska. And so there's a couple of those, I don't know, 100 or so. In any case, I can use other filters like this. This is going to show me all the populations greater than 100,000. So if I run this, that query is going to take a little bit longer because it's not an indexed field, but it does return the results. And we do see oh, about two dozen results there with a population of more than 100,000. So you can see that I'm doing queries like that. This does support things, operators like the and and greater than right here. So if I was to use a symbol, let's just say I use greater than uh, like this, this is going to return an error. And uh, that's because the query itself was invalid because the, the greater than is done by GT. And GT is for greater than in this case, and then I can use and, and that will return me all of the zip codes in California that have a population greater than 100,000. So the OData filtering technology that is built on top of this it does allow me to do some filtering. However, the basic thing that you want to remember with this is just because you can do it doesn't mean that you should do it. Now, if you're going to be looking up data, it's better to look it up using partition keys and row keys and in those in different combinations, trying to keep it within a given partition for uh, to make it perform better. However, if you do need to go across partitions, try to do it on the row key. And worst case scenario is to filter on one of these fields over here that isn't indexed. So that's just something to keep in mind whenever you go to filter this, but you can filter it. So you can build apps around this that do take advantage of that. The caveat is just making sure that you're doing it in a way that isn't going to require a lot of churn on the, the, the part of the API to come back with your result set. If you like this content, please consider checking us out online at www.winelect.com where you can find several blog entries about topics related to Microsoft Azure and software development. And you can also subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button below and then clicking on the bell icon to receive notifications when new content becomes available. Until next time, thanks.